can't speak for anyone else. You know, when someone has been in prayer, they can't expect someone who has not been in prayer to sense the same thing. I don't think the PA system's Jesus, working at all. Jesus. I'm going to come down here with you so you can hear me better. Thank you, Jesus. I said someone and people that's been in prayer. People that's been in prayer. Yes. Can't expect somebody that has not been in prayer. That's right. To experience the same thing. That's right. At the same time. And I understand that. But I want you to understand the devil is fighting you tooth and toenail with everything he's got because he's trying to defeat you and I'm doing everything in my power and in the power of God Jesus. to defeat the devil in every one of your lives. Amen. Hallelujah. So you'll have victory Hallelujah. that you will not be defeated. You will not go under. You will not go to hell. I'm fighting for you. And the only one I'm fighting against is the devil that's against every one of us. And I'm fighting for you to win. Thank you. And I'm claiming you to win in Jesus' Hallelujah. name. I've got a possibly the most powerful revelation I've ever had and prophecy I've ever had in my life. And I want to ask you to stand one more time if you'll be so kind, if you're able. I know some are not able to stand, and I understand that, and the Lord understands. But I need your prayers Jesus. that the Word of God will have liberty. And I want to preach it just like God gave it to me. And I want to speak the word of prophecy and revelation just like God gave it to me. And I'm going to pray for you. So I want you to reach your hand this way and pray for this preacher. That I preach what God has spoken to me to preach in the word in Jesus name. Father, I pray for every person in this building. Every man, woman, boy and girl, every child, every person. Oh God, from the balcony and the PA booth to every pew every place on this stage God all the instrumentalists Lord in every room in the children's church we pray God for every person in this building and on this property to hear what thus said the word of the Lord that nobody leave here without being touched and without being ready to meet Jesus oh God help them understand the nearness of the coming of Jesus Father I pray for every person that they will receive and see and understand and comprehend what your spirit is saying today and I give them into your hands that deliverance is brought deliverance is brought to every person and they receive it in the holy name Jesus and all God's people said amen praise God you may be seated if you can I don't know if we have a a white tablecloth left in the back in the fellowship hall. Does anybody know if we have a white tablecloth back there? Nobody knows. If you can find it, bring it on out to me, please. The crucified body of Jesus was taken from the cross by Joseph of Arithmia. Actually, I'm saying that wrong. I've said it that way all my life, and it's incorrect the way I pronounce it. Arimathia is the way it's actually pronounced. And Joseph took the body of, he, he went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus to take it down from the cross. And, and Pilate gave him leave and gave him that authority and authorized him to take the body of Jesus off the cross. Can you imagine handling the dead body of Jesus? The carcass. He was not in there. His soul and spirit had already left his body, but his body, the carcass, his physical being that he received by going through Mary. He received that body through going through Mary. 
And Jesus, as he hung there, Joseph begged the body from Pilate, and Pilate allowed him to take it down. And Joseph wrapped his body in a clean, pure linen cloth. Pure linen cloth. Now, then they laid his body in Joseph's tomb that had never had a body ever. It had never had a body in that tomb. Never had a body in that tomb. And Joseph of Arithamea owned that, that tomb. He had it dug out for himself. But he allowed Jesus to borrow the tomb for a weekend. Jesus only needed that tomb for the weekend. He wasn't going to be a permanent resident in that tomb. He just needed a weekend in that tomb, the place to lay his carcass, his body, his outer shell, his human form. While he was gone into the, under the earth, to the center of the earth, preaching to those spirits, those righteous spirits under the earth, including Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the way back. And I want you to understand that God used Jesus to go down and preach to the spirits and they had an opportunity to accept him as Savior and Lord of their life. You see, the law cannot save you. The law just reveals sin to you and tells you about sin. The grace of God in the blood of Jesus is the only part that will cleanse us from all sin and unrighteousness. And Jesus will cleanse every sin, no matter what you've sinned. Some of you have sinned some horrendous sins. Some of you perhaps have, have sinned fornication and adultery and, and some of you may have been homosexuals or lesbians or, or committed bestiality and all other different kind of sins. And you say, well, God forgive me. God, for Christ's sake, will forgive you of every sin. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. And I'm so glad he'll wash you. He'll cleanse you as if you never sinned. It's, that's why the justification, he says, that we're therefore we're justified, just if, as if I'd never sinned. Justified by grace, by faith, by the blood of Jesus. And when he justifies you, it is as if you have never sinned in all your life. To God be all the glory. In Matthew 27, 57 through 60. Matthew 27, 57 through 60. And then reading. When the evening was come, had come, there came a rich man from Arithmea, Mathia, named Joseph, who himself, let me read from KJV. When the evening was come, there came a rich man from Arithmea, named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He was a disciple of Jesus. And he went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. And he laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. Now Joseph prepared the body of Jesus. And I want you to see something. Thank you. That's closest to what we got. Thank you. Hallelujah. I want you to picture and imagine this is white. Imagine this is white. Closest we had. Now this cloth, Joseph took this cloth and wrapped the body, the body of Jesus in this cloth. And I want you to understand the church is the body of Jesus. Amen. Joseph wrapped. Now Dallas, he's, he's good to help me. I'm gonna, he's going to represent this, the whole church around the world. Y'all great. Now Joseph wrapped the church with a clean linen cloth. 
He wrapped you before you were born in a clean white linen cloth. Praise God. Brother Tim Hill preached something touching on this, but this is nothing like what he preached in General Assembly. When Joseph wrapped Jesus' body, his body was dead. The church must be dead with Christ and covered in the righteousness, purity, holiness of God, wrapped completely. Church, you got to be wrapped completely in purity, in holiness, in righteousness. You say, I don't believe in holiness. You can't go to heaven. Amen. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Amen. You got to be holiness to make it inside the gates. That's what the word says. It's in the book. If you read what Hebrews says, I believe it's about 12, 14. And that's not in my outline. Because the Holy Ghost just keeps giving me scriptures. God's wanting to, he has to wrap us in holiness. It's the holiness of God. Jesus' body, the church, must be wrapped in clean white linen representing the purity as a matter of fact when you go to heaven and he gives you a robe he's going to hand out robes he's going to give you a pure white robe and it will have no spot nor blemish in that robe you're going to get to receive this wrapped around your shoulders praise God you can sit down if you want to just take that off it's hot I know thank you but so many have disrobed themselves from the holiness of God. They're still in a church somewhere and they're living any kind of way they want to because it feels good or because it's convenient. But it is so deceptive that people are listening to the devil instead of what God is saying to them. As, as Joseph prepared the body of Jesus, Galatians 2.20, and crucified with Christ. The Holy Ghost is preparing the body. The Holy Ghost is preparing the body of Jesus. The church right now. The Holy Ghost is preparing the body of Jesus, of Christ, of the church right now. You are the body of Christ. And members in particular, no matter what part of the member of the, the body of Christ you are, now, I told you I was going to share with you what happened on Revelation Wednesday night. This is the tip of the iceberg of what came later. While I was sitting on this pew right here, I was sitting there and, and Scott White was teaching under such a heavy anointing. God touched him and used him in a wonderful way. But Scott, you may not have realized it, but I left the building. And I was in heaven during the service. Only those of you that receive what God gives you can hear this and comprehend it. I was not in my body. I was sitting like right here, just like this. I was sitting here, but yet I was in heaven. And I was looking back on this service and on my body in the past. I'm in the past right now because I'm in heaven. You say, have you lost your mind, Brother Knight? Not hardly, because I have the mind of Christ. Some of you may not want to ever Listen to me again after you hear what the God showed me. I saw, Brother Scott, you teaching. I saw the body here, but I was gone. But, and God showed me as if this was the, what was going on was the past, was history. And to you that were here, it was happening right then. Hallelujah. <laughs> God 
gave me a taste of how it is to be in him completely as he sees it he sees now as if it were a thousand years in the past in the mind of God I want you to hear this he sees now people worrying and fretting what's going on it's senseless and useless because what you, what's happening now has already happened now this is powerful it's more powerful than I am God, God showed me the present as if it had already passed and it had already passed it was history even though to we humans it was present you say preacher that blows my mind well it does mine too you're not by yourself you see God is a God Alpha and Omega he's in the past he's in the present and he's in the eternity future my great Lamb of God you don't have to worry about the future you don't have to worry about the present because God's got it all taken care of Amen. it's all in his hands it's all in his control you don't have any control over it there's nothing you can do about the past present or the future because God's got you in his hand my God help me preach this Lord Jesus without shouting and running these aisles hallelujah I feel like shouting and running the aisles but I've got to stand here and control myself and preach because I've got to give this message that came from the throne room of God himself hallelujah God sees what was and is and is to come he's the I am and always will be God was showing me prophecy in reverse like he did with Moses remember when Moses was up on the mountain and God said, you can't see my face, but you can see my hind parts. And God put his hand up. He couldn't see him, his face, but he, he let him see his hind parts. And you say, what was that, preacher? Was that the backside of God? No, it was, it was prophecy of the beginning of time uh, for this earth. And he saw when Adam and Eve was born. There was no scribe here to write that down. God gave it to Moses. The first five books of the Bible. God give Moses prophecy in reverse. He saw the beginning of the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Nobody was here to write that and scribe it down. Moses recorded it. And you say, well, he wasn't here. No, he wasn't here, but God gave him the prophetic word revelation in the past. Reverse. Back to the, the beginning. He showed him. He showed him the beginning and brought him on up to date in that day. God showed Moses so we today would know what he did before Moses' time. Amen. Oh, great Lamb of God. Can you imagine how great God is that he wants to show you not only now, most people have enough trouble now they can't hardly handle it. Matter of fact, men's hearts failing them for fear of things coming on the earth. Things are coming on the earth like you've never seen before. You've never heard of before. And if you hadn't got your right, heart right with God, you may just have a heart attack for seeing and for fearful things, being fearful of things coming. Because it's not going to get better before Jesus comes. It's going to get worse. There's going to be more pressure than ever before. But if you trust in God, I said if you trust in God, you won't worry about the present. You won't worry about what's going on. You won't worry about who's president and who's not president. You won't worry about who's over this and who's over that. Because God is in control and we're in his kingdom, the kingdom of God. He 
he's our king. Jesus is Lord and he's our king. I said Jesus is our king. Jesus is our Lord. He's our overseer of overseers. You don't have to worry about it. God's got it all in control. I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, or Independent, or whatever it is. God has in control. You say, if so and go, so gets it, we'll be ruined. Or if the other person gets it, we won't make it. Well, I want to tell you, if your trust is in man, you're lost to start with. But if you trust in God and know he cares for you, God will take care of you every step of the way, no matter what comes or goes. In Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you have said, just come out of your mouth. And you said, I wish I could go back in time. I may lose some people here. What if you have? What if God allowed you to go back in time? And this is it. Maybe you messed up. And God backed it up a little bit. He said, man, that's far out. You had not heard nothing yet. I know of a man, I know of him, Joshua, that God moved the sun back 10 degrees. Hallelujah. He backed up time for Joshua so he could fight and win that war. My, I got to get on here. God's allowing you to do just that. Some things you've messed up. And God is letting you straighten it out. Hallelujah. It's just good you didn't, you didn't know the future then and now. It's powerful what God's doing in you and in the church. And some people may say, well, that's heresy, preacher. I believe I've got scripture to back up everything I've said. Because God can do what he wants to do. Amen. This time, this life now that you're living, this is it. You better do right this time. You better make things right this time. You better use your time wisely this time. Because it won't be another time to go back over this time. Hallelujah. Now well, that's good. In Wake, Wake is a ministry that was at the General Assembly, Church of God General Assembly in Nashville, Tennessee. In July, where we went to General Assembly. And there was this young woman in this Wake ministry, 19-year-old girl. 19 year old girl. I didn't get to meet her. I read this as they sent it to me over the email. She was in the, she's in the church of God. And she's a young woman called into the ministry. She wasn't just wanting to do something. She put feet in her prayers and did something for God. They had a under the bridge ministry at Nashville during the General Assembly. Our young people went out and minister during this, this time of the General Assembly. While we were in business meetings, they were out preaching and ministering and witnessing to people under the bridge. They have a church under the bridge. They have a church under the bridge. I want you to, you, you hadn't heard it yet, but some of you didn't hear this, but they have a church under the bridge in Nashville, Tennessee. And they went there ministering. Now these people, we're going to see some of them when we go in August to West Virginia. And I'll touch on that in just a moment. We're going to see some things that, that God's going to do. But she was there under the bridge and ministering. And she was a female ministering under the Lord against what some people believe women shouldn't say anything or do anything. They should just be quiet. 
But this girl, precious girl, give her heart to the Lord. God has called her to preach. Do you know why God's calling these people to preach? Some of the women. And I praise God for our women preachers here. We've got two or three here. I believe three in the congregation today. Maybe more. Because men will not submit themselves. God is raising up these precious young ladies and precious women. Men say, I won't go. I'm too busy. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. But these precious ladies, thank God for the ladies in the church. I would not want to pastor a church without ladies in it. It would be a dead church, the most spiritual church in this church. And any church I've ever seen is the women. The women seek God more than the men. Amen. You can't hear me. I know you can't. You'd say amen. I said the women seek God more than the men do. The men, we got some men that seek God. Look who comes to the war room to pray. A lot of women, some men, few. Men don't have time to go pray. We may have more praying tonight. <laughs> but the women are the ones that can get a hold of God. There was a woman named Sister Tom Brooks. When I was called to preach, I've told you about this. Sister Tom Brooks, I went to her house. I wanted to pray with her and her to pray for me before I preached my first message in 1969, January 26. I can see her little feeble, bony hands laid on me now. And I knelt there at a chair in her living room or a sofa, whatever was there. I made an altar. Her son James was there, Jim. And Sister Brooks come over and laid hands on me. And you can say what you want to. That lady shouted and danced all through her house. We're talking about in her 70s or 80s, upper 70s or upper 80s. You say, well, she wasn't able to do that, was she? You let the Holy Ghost get a hold of anybody, any of you, and you'll see what you can do. Part of the success of my ministry, others as well, and she prayed for me. And I preached that Sunday night. Brother Walter Watson was there. There were nine souls came to Jesus. Came to Jesus. You say, well, does prayer mean that much? Yes, it does. Preached my first message. It wasn't that great a message. The first message you could imagine. But yet there was anointing of the Holy Ghost. God's Holy Ghost power anointed me. And nine people came to Jesus that night and gave their heart and life to the Lord. And I praise God that in Jesus' name, some of them are still living for God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Let me get on here. I've got a lot, a lot of ground. Just a short time to, to finish up. Zacchaeus in Luke 19. Jesus wrapped the church in salvation. He was Zacchaeus. He heard Jesus was coming. He ran up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. You know the little children's song that we've sung all our lives? He heard Jesus was passing that way. Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And Zacchaeus was the chief among the publicans and he was rich. Even rich people want to see Jesus. There's some rich people in this congregation. There's several multimillionaires sitting beside you. Sitting beside you. Multi-billionaires. Multi-trillionaires. Some of you don't know your own wealth. I want you to introduce, I want to introduce you to my father. Does anybody know my father? Did you know he owns the cattle on all the hills? And do you know he owns all the oil and gold and silver under the soil and under the hills? Amen. 
under the valleys? Do you know he owns all the waters and all the streams and all the oceans and all the seas? Did you know he owns it all? I must be hard of hearing this morning. Did you know God owns everything? Say amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I was hoping we wouldn't, wouldn't have to pray for God to raise the dead this morning. A little quiet. This is a Pentecostal church. This is a Pentecostal church. This is a church of God. We worship. We praise God. We say hallelujah. We say amen because God is worthy of praising. Hallelujah. Don't you dare get quiet on me. I nearly smell the sawdust. Hallelujah. Jesus said in the 8th, ninth verse, he said, this day of salvation come to this house. Talk about Zacchaeus' house. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Zacchaeus was lost and Jesus came to find him and save him. In the book of Romans 7 and 4, he said, Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another. Instead of married to the law, we are to be married to Christ and be married to the dispensation of grace. Even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Amen. Bring forth fruit to him. Then in Romans 8 and 10 and 11, if Christ be in you, how many is Christ in? Less than six people. Christ is in. Do you people know how to say amen? amen. I'm going to have to teach y'all how to worship Pentecostal style. Hallelujah. Do you understand the spirit of the Father is in you? And with the spirit of the Father in you, you are alive under Christ Jesus. Amen. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He said, Christ be in you. The body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him, the spirit of the Father, that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Jesus Christ, he said, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Yes. Praise God. Amen. In Romans 12 and 5, he says, so we being many as are the one body in Christ and every one members one of, a t of another. We're all members one of another. No man, woman, boy, or girl is an island. We don't serve God by ourselves. We are together. We need each other. Amen. 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 First Corinthians 12, 27. Now you are the body of Christ. Now you are the body of Christ. Now you, 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 you are the body of Christ. And members in particular. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are the body of Christ. Amen, brother. And I preach it. If you don't say amen, I'll say it myself. I tell you, I'm going to have to call Morgan if y'all don't wake up. I may have to get call your butler and all of them around here. Village Chapel. And Glencoe Hoax Bluff to take a big load. There's a lot of deadness here. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, God wants us to be alive in Christ. He don't want us to be a old dead carcass. He wants to be alive in him in Jesus' name. Elijah took, Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it around Elisha. And Elisha immediately stopped plowing, killed his oxen, took the plow and chopped it up for wood to burn and, and to cook the oxen. And they, they had a banquet, they had a feast. 
And then, as he followed after Elijah, he said, what have I done to you? And so Elijah had done a great touch for him. A great call for Elisha. Elijah gave a great call to Elisha because he placed his mantle around him and that meant Elisha, you're clothed with the mantle of the man and prophet of God and you'll never be the same again. I want you to understand once the Spirit of God touches you and the anointing comes on you, you are never the same the rest of your life. And you can't be the same because God moving in you stirs you. Some of you need to be stirred of the Holy Ghost. Some of you have, have served God and were faithful to God but yet you've drifted, Holy Ghost of God, speak. You have drifted so far from God. And if Jesus came, I question, would you go to be with him? But I want you to understand, you don't have to stay drifted. You can grab hold of the anchor of God and pull closer to him because he's throwing out the lifeline to every soul here today to draw you close to him. And he wants you to be close to him in Jesus' name. Several in this church have been touched with the power of God. In a few short weeks, two, what is it, two or three weeks, we're going to West Virginia. God has placed a burden in you greater perhaps than you've ever had in all your life. A, a pastor in church in West Virginia prayed. I called over there, made contact to general headquarters and found out who the pastor was and, and called and that pastor said, Brother Knight, we've been praying for somebody to help us. And our hearts were touched before I ever talked to the man. Some of you church people are, have been touched of the Holy Ghost and got such a burden on you that you can hardly stand it. It's greater than any of us are. And he, he cried out, was crying out for help and the church was crying out for help. And I want you to understand the spirit and power of Almighty God touched inside of you and you heard the cry of the pastor and those people in West Virginia and God chose you. Everybody's not chosen to go and it's okay if you don't go. We need everyone here to pray that's not going to pray for the team that is going. About 26, 28 people is going to West Virginia. We need you. You're just as important as those that go and we need you. 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 I fear that because it's some are not going, they feel they're not important or their prayer's not important. May I tell you that pastor and that church that prayed and got in our heart that we've never seen or heard of before is so important to us. We've never seen them. I didn't know who they were. But yet God got in our heart. I pray that this power of God gets in everybody's heart that you pray for these ministries and missionaries. We're missionaries as we go in Jesus' name. I'm going to jump forward real fast. I've got about 12 minutes and I've got to share this. 7.30 last night and I'll be coming to a close. 7.30 Saturday night, July 30th. The spirit of prophecy came upon me to speak these words. God said, and pray for me while I read this. God said, I've chosen you to deliver chosen you to deliver my children from the bondage and poverty and defeat. 
man has been used to torment and control and discourage. I'm sending my people to liberate my children in West Virginia. Do not be afraid. Do not allow discouragement to overcome you. Do not listen to the naysayers. Listen to me. Look to me. I will make a way where there seems to be no way. Look to my resources. Catch that. Look to my resources. Look to my help. Look to my anointing. Look to my strength. Look to my spirit to direct and show you each step of the way. I will give you souls for your labor. You shall not labor in vain. Do not rely on old ways to do what I did then. As Moses struck the rock the second time and disobeyed me. I need, to, I need to share that again. Do not rely on old ways to do what I did then as Moses struck the rock the second time and disobeyed me. Hear my word and my spirit fresh. My spirit is stirring a new wind as I breathe fresh breath into and upon my people. My children, you will see new things that I will perform and manifest. Things of my word and spirit not yet revealed to you. I have hid them in my word. In the near due season, I will reveal my word fresh unto you. You will see, experience, and walk in the newness of my word. I will do as I have said. Not many days, and you shall see with your own eyes of your flesh and spirit, I will multiply, and none can hinder my hand. Stand with me all over this place. Sorry, can you play, Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul through me that I may ever do my part to love that soul to thee. Everyone here that is not ready to meet Jesus. Some of you have been instructed by doctrines of devils. And you say, I got saved such and such a time. And you haven't lived like you were saved, but you say you're saved. God's word says, he that sinneth continually is of the devil. No child of God is of the devil. The only way you can get to heaven is without sin in your life. You say, don't we sin a little every day? No, only the sinners and devil does. Sinners sin every day. Christians do not sin every day. That is a lie of the devil, and it's not in the scripture. I want you to understand very clearly. The word of God tells us, come unto me and I will make you fishers of men. And come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. It is toilsome and hard living in sin. There is a heavy burden living in sin. There's a sorrow living in sin. You can't live with one foot on the in grace, going to heaven, and one foot in sin, living every day in sin. You can't live that way. It's an impossible life. You're miserable. 
You've got to come to Jesus. And I want to ask you, please, prayer champions, don't let me have to ask you to come. When somebody comes to this altar, meet them here. Please, I beg you. I beg you. Souls are on the precipice of eternity. My God, Father, please show this congregation by your Spirit truth. Show this congregation truth in the name of Jesus. That they say truth of you. They see truth of you, Father. Right now, in Jesus' name. While we sing this chorus, I'm inviting you to come. And more than myself, the spirit and power of God is inviting you to come. Yield to God right now, please. I beg you, yield to God. Humble yourself unto the mighty hand of God. He'll lift you up. Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul through me. soul to thee. Won't you come to Jesus? Won't you come to Jesus? If you could see the next breath or you could see the next hour, the next day, if you could see into eternity when you are in eternity, you would run to this altar. You would literally run to this altar to seek God. You would literally run down the aisle. You'd jump over pews if you had to to get to this altar. Because you want to go to heaven. You want to go to heaven. You want to serve God. You want to please Him. And I just want to let you know you need to have the anointing of God in your life. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. He will more than thrill you. He'll fill you. Give you strength. God's grace is sufficient to help everybody here. You say, well, I can't keep from, from living in sin. God will help you. He will help you. You can make it. You can walk in the footprints of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Is anyone coming? Are you coming? Are you coming to pray? Father, I give this congregation into your hands. Lord, I can preach the word, but I can't make the decision for them. Just like you won't make the decision for them, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Lord, you won't make anybody go to heaven, and you don't make anybody go to hell. You made the plan of salvation for us, and I thank you that you've spoken today to lives and hearts and spirits and souls and beings, and you've drawn individuals to you. And I pray for everyone here, God. Those that are lost, there's lost people here that's going to go to hell, God, except they repent and be godly sorrowful. Father, cause them to live for you, serve you, love you, give their heart to you. Somewhere, somehow, before this day ends, in Jesus, in Jesus, in Jesus, in Jesus, in Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. God in Jesus. 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 If there is an interpreter, let him speak. If there's an interpreter, speak and give the interpretation. If God's given you the interpretation to this message.
Praise God. In Jesus. In Jesus' name. The Lord said, I love you. I care for you. I watch over you. I want you to be obedient. I want you to love one another. I want you to love one another. I want you to love one another. Jesus. I love you. I care for you. The Lord Jesus died for you. And you are to love one another. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus loves you. Love him back like he loves you. Just keep on loving Jesus. If you don't love him as much as you should, give yourself to him. Say, God, help me to love you more. God, help me to love you more. God, help me to love you more. Be more like Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's change and say, To be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. That's all I ask. Is to be like Him. All through life's journey. to be like him praise God be like Jesus be like Jesus be like him but I admonish you not to leave here like you came in Jesus name don't leave here like you came in Jesus name do not leave like you came in Jesus name if you need help if you need prayer don't go away from here without receiving that help or that prayer. Let Jesus help you. Let Jesus help you. The name of this church is Safe Harbor, Church of God. It's a safe place. It's a safe harbor. And one of our emblems is a lighthouse, sending out the light and the love of Jesus to help every soul in Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. She's coming for healing. Karen is coming for healing. Let's believe God to heal this sinus, the headaches. It's not necessary for a child of God to go on sick. It's not necessary. I know you don't want to go on it. That's why you, you won't come up for prayer. Let's believe God. Sinus headaches. Jesus. Jesus.
just like Jesus.